Hi, this is John from Remotify, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Control Surface Studio to create mappings for setting the device parameters to specific positions with button presses on your MIDI controller. So the first thing to note about device parameters are they behind the scenes they have different values. We have a resource on the Remotify website, which is this page, the Ableton device parameter finder, and we have versions for Live 11 and 10. And what you can do is you can come in here and find whatever device parameters you want to control, find the device for it. Let's say it's auto filter, you can find the name of the parameter that you want to control and then the device parameter number is here, which will be important shortly. But also we have the min value for the parameter and the max value. And you can see that different parameters have different minimum and maximum values. So depending on where you want to set the parameter position will depend on the minimum and maximum. We'll be using this page while we're creating our script. I'll add this in the description. But let's start building the script. So I've already created the script with the name set parameter position. And I'll add a new mode to that. And then in here I'll add a track selector and set the track type to selected and then oops, then in the track selector I'll add a device selector and set that to selected as well and then in the device selector we're going to have a parameter bank and we just need one parameter. So I'll close that and now we have the parameter mapping here. So the first thing I'm going to do is as I want to control this function with a button press on the twister, I want to control it with button 1. So I'll set the controller input to button one and we'll turn snapping off for now. Select device parameter. So we need to figure out what device parameter number we want to control on the device. What we're going to use for this example is the EQ3 device. And I want to control this style here, the freak high, frequency high crossover. So if I go to this page, into audio effects, and then go to the EQ3 device. So I want to control this one, freak high, and that parameter number is five. And also take a look at the maximum value, which is one. So first of all, I'll put number five in as the device parameter number. For minimum, I'm going to leave this set at zero. So when I press the button, this is set as a toggle. So I'll press it once and that'll turn the button on. When I press it again, that releases the button or turns the button off. So when that happens, I'll set this to um, send the value of zero, which will set the dial to zero. Now for maximum, so that's when I toggle it on. So at the moment it's set to 100%, which would set the dial to 100%. So this is where people get tripped up a bit. So because the maximum value is 1, what we actually need to do here to set it to the maximum 
would be to set that to one. If you if you leave it set at 100%, I, it's probably not going to work for this this um, parameter. So we'll set that to one, and that's all we need to do for this. Install that into Ableton. I'll just close that. And then reload live. So as I already set up the script before starting this tutorial, everything's already set up here. CSS set parameter position is the name of the script. The MIDI fighter twister is set as the input and output. Track and remote are ticked for the in and out. So let's just set it there. When I toggle the button on, it sets it all the way to the top. And then I toggle it off, set it down to the bottom. So what if, for this parameter, I wanted to set it to halfway, so here. Well then we just need to set it to half based on half of this. So one is full, so 50% of that is 0.5. I'll install that. So now when I press it, it sets it to halfway. I'm gonna press it again, it sets it back down to zero. So what happens then if I was to put this into a group and I wanted to control a macro on here. Let's make sure this is selected. Um, so what number are we using? We're using number so it's complaining that snapping's turned off and let's just double check everything on here so if I go to the audio effect rack we're using device parameter 5 which is macro 5 so yeah, this one should be doing something, but it's not. And we can see for all the macros, the minimum is zero, the maximum is 127, and there's no decimal places on this. So in order to control the macro, let's say we want to set that to halfway. We change that to 50% and turn snapping on so it snaps to a whole value rather than a decimal position. to a group and now you can see that it sets it to 50 and then when I press it again it sets it back to zero. So that's how you can use a combination of finding the, the right value for a device parameter and then you can have a play around with it and set the parameter to whatever you needed to do when you press a button. We also have a script which you might find useful if you go to the Ableton device parameter finder page. Here's a link to a script called log device parameter names which I've already made a tutorial about previously. 
but basically what you can do is you can add this script and when you press a button on your MIDI controller whichever device is selected it will automatically log the um, parameter names and parameter numbers in a list let's just go to the video so So here I'm selecting a device and then pressing a button on my virtual MIDI controller and it's display it's outputs all of the parameter names there in a list. So you can use that for if any devices are missing from the list that we have, you can just add the script and get the values yourself, that the names. Rather than using the parameter mapping type, you can actually do this with a reaction quite easily. So I'll just go through that as well, as I think it'll be quite useful. So I'll add a reaction. And the listener for this reaction, I'll use button number two. So I'll go into MIDI controller and use the button 2 was pressed listener so which means the reaction is now the reaction will listen for whenever button 2 presses and then it'll fire whatever code is in these action blocks so the action that I want to happen when button 2 is pressed is if I go into lab object model device parameter I'm going to set the value of a device parameter and I'll set if I ungroup this I'll set this to um, similar to what we did before but I'll set it to um, 0 0.75 so about three quarters full so when I press the button it should go to around here somewhere. Button 2 gets pressed, that gets set to 0.75, I'll install that. I forgot to do one thing, so although I did add the device parameter set value, I didn't specify these details. So as with the other mapping I'm going to use selected track and selected device and then for the device parameter number EQ3 and we want it to control number 5. So the one thing to note with reactions is it actually will be one higher than what it says so the parameter number will count from one so rather than it come from zero as here, this will be one, this will be two, three, four, five. So we want, we actually want number six. So set this to number six. And then that looks good. Close that. Install it. Okay, so make sure this is selected. And now, when I press it, it sets it to 70, 0.75. And then let's just take this a little bit further. So at the moment, whenever the button is pressed or released, this is being fired because we haven't got any conditions to check for the value that is being sent by the MIDI controller by the input of the MIDI controller so I'll add a condition in I'm going to get the button 2's latest velocity value and if it is equal to one two seven, which 
if I just open with the monitor, when I press the button, you can see that the velocity is 127 and then when I release it, it's zero. So when button two, the latest velocity value is equal to 127, set the device parameter to 0.75. Okay, and now I'll just duplicate this and for the second one, I'm gonna do something similar, but for the condition, we're gonna check for when the velocity value is zero, which is when I release the button. Oh, I didn't note that this one is set to toggle. This one is momentary. So that's a little difference between those two to be aware of. So when I release button two, what I'm going to do is set it to set the parameter to, let's say 0.25. And I think that should be everything needed. Let's give this a name, let's say button two is pressed and then button two is released. Install that into Ableton. Okay. So now when I press the button, frequency high gets set to about three quarters. And then when I release, it gets set to about a quarter. So yeah, that's it for setting device parameters to specific values. Thank you. Thank um. you.